good evening good morning good afternoon everybody uh, this is the machinery development meeting today is may 26th and uh, we are three over and we i think we can get started so first up we have gaurav who will be demoing on uh, filters ui gaurav do you want to share your screen yeah sure uh, while gaurav does that uh, to get give a bit of context uh, uh, we recently added support for filters that is uh, uh, wasm filters uh, in meshery so gaurav has been uh, working on building a, a ui that will uh, where the user can uh, manage their filter files and import and deploy filters so yeah gaurav all yours Okay, I have to log in again. One minute. So yeah, hello everyone. I'll be giving a walk through the filters UI. Uh, it is a work in progress, so you may consider it as a draft. So it is built pretty much similar to the patents UI. So uh, in the in the filters UI, the it will be used to connect with the WebAssembly filters, uh, aka the WASM filters. And here currently, uh, it is not fetching the data because I am configuring it specifically for the JSON file format. So the users can upload the file from their machine uh, using the similar process they upload in the patterns. Okay. So currently it's not supported because I'm specifically designing it for the JSON fam format because in the patterns UI, we can see that it is only supported the YAML and the YML format. So we will be integrating the data with a React JSON schema. So the user can create itself here and add up the values for the filters so which will be a part of this data table also so after the data table is ready we can uh, integrate it with the uh, with the web assembly that is wasm filters using crud commands so that's all for uh messy filters i have done till now so it's a work in progress Hello. Garage, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, um, good to see this nice. That's a healthy looking um, icon that you have as well. That's great. Mm, um, I was busy chatting while you were giving part of the updates. Let me let me recap okay. a little bit if I could to make sure we're. So, mm. so one one thing is that for some of us this is for some of us. Um, and this usually includes myself. We're sent, we're asking ourselves. Uh, what the heck is this guy talking about? You know, like, and so in this case, you're talking about filters, okay? So network traffic filters, okay? So in service mesh land, <clears throat> um, request user requests like HTTP requests, um, commonly, but they don't have to be HTTP. Like these requests are being sent to someone's WordPress blog that's being hosted on a service mesh, as an example. And um, service meshes have the ability to capture the, those requests, filter mm. them, or apply filters to like intelligent filters, deep, deeply intelligent filters at an application level to, well, affect the traffic, like stop the traffic, um, speed it up, send it somewhere else, change, maybe change the CSS that, that comes back. So <clears throat> maybe we can apply a... Uh, this is going to be kind of a pun, I guess, but a, a, um, if you ever, you, you know, doing photography and you have a filter on your camera, a filter on your lens, 
like we could apply the dark mode filter to a website without changing the um, without the website itself changing uh, a, a meshery filter could bring dark there could be a dark mode filter brings dark mode to websites um, without changing code of the website that's kind of cool um, and so th so that's just a random example of like what these filters can do in order for and filters are things that um, the developers can write um, that there's an example of one that was demonstrated um, a year ago at the last DockerCon. By the way, DockerCon is like starts tomorrow. Um, we're not presenting this time around. We presented the last, I don't know, three, four DockerCons. <clears throat> I'm giving workshops at those as well. But um, uh, the link will um, help people understand and give context to what you're showing. And then I think more specifically to what you're showing, you're showing the ability for Meshery to take different network traffic filters and insert them into service meshes. To start with, Meshery needs um, basic CRUD operations, basic like create, read, update, delete operations for these filters. And you're intentionally creating this capability in Meshery in a very similar fashion as to how patterns have been created. So if you don't mind, can you go to the patterns UI, that menu for a moment? And so um, actually to start with before the data populated there, like it was really hard to tell the difference. Like these are very similar and this is, that's great. Like that means that you're doing a quality job. Um, it's quality because these two UIs will be consistent and the user will have a consistent experience and that'll be great. Now you're intentionally, I think, um, not providing certain functionality for filters because they work differently than patterns and that, you know, but yeah. one thing that it strikes me that I don't think that we've seen just yet in the demos that you've been giving is um, anything in the table. And I know, and so have you been able to import a file or a filter? Uh, yeah. No, well, because the, in the patterns one, the data fetch function allows only the YAML and the YML format. So for the filter one as discussed with Pranav, so I'll be implementing it just for the JSON file format. So- No, 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 it doesn't, like forget about that. That doesn't matter at all. Okay. Just let any file get uploaded. It's not gonna be just JSON. Um, if, is Pranav on? No. Um, that's funny because he was asking for another meeting. Um, Speaking of, um, Anita, do you mind pinging, um, well, del delusional optimist, or, or maybe um, Abhishek, can you do that? Since I know you, you know who Rude Raksh is and see if he can jump on. But uh, Gar Garav, uh, yeah. nope. it doesn't matter. Like, hey, even if that were the case, still doesn't matter. Still, you want to progress and push forward to show that you can upload a file, you can retrieve it, you can show data about it. Okay. Later, if it needed to only be JSON, okay. But that won't be the case in this case. It needs to be, well, anything. Um, why? Because filters come in a lot of different packages. Um, mm. We'll be able to whittle it down, but even at that, like, um, I'm not sure how far, it, it'll take us a long time to will that down. Right now, we'll just let the user shoot themselves in the foot if they want to. Meaning we won't, um, what do you call it? We won't restrict them, we won't validate it just yet. Okay, so uh, I'll be integrating for any file format for now. If you would, yeah, thank you. Uh, do, do you, um, have you ever, just in your testing this out, have you ever, tried loading a file? Uh, yeah, I was uh, tried loading a file, but uh, the data fetch function, uh, which I was working here. Okay. And, and it, it did upload or, or no? Uh, no, it didn't upload it because I think there must be some uh, path issue. So I'll be sorting that too. Nice, okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm super encouraged to see this graph. This is, it's, um, it's looking good. And it looks like you're, 
you're diligently following along on the, the right path? So yeah, I'll be configuring uh, this issue too and will specify any file format is supported or not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it would be good to, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's kind of, just kind of a whole nother set of discussions around file formats and what, if anything, to do with them. Um, that it's actually in part why the singular largest difference between patterns functionality and filters functionality will be that for patterns, if you don't mind, can you click on that ellipse on the right-hand side um, on any of the rows, the dot, 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 okay. for whatever reason it's called an ellipse. Um, and you can, and people can edit it. Why? Because pattern files are always YAML files. Okay, great. So we can, you know, let them edit this stuff right here. But for the filters, well, so we are not giving most, access. Yeah, the, it's likely that many of the filters will be binaries. So binary files that like you can't edit because it's yeah. compiled. Now, some of what uh, some of what comprises a filter, it might be like two or three files that are belong to the same filter. One of those might be a JSON file that provides configuration, maybe, um, but probably not. <laughs> and that's why there's a whole second, um, a, there's a second addition to what you're doing. Like right now you're doing CRUD and you're just trying to get stuff into a table and provide simple stuff. As soon as you're successful and, and you're next time you're demoing, you're showing the ability to upload and um, delete, you know, create, up, upload, delete. Yeah. We'll, we'll go through and design, collect, you know, collaboratively, we'll design um, a, another interface. We'll, we'll squish the table into its own section, but we'll design another interface in which people will be able to use your UI to configure the filters. And so instead of people editing YAML, they will edit the configuration of the filter. And so it'll be pretty neat when we get there, but. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone else have um, feedback for or questions for Garav? Cool. So hopefully everyone um, saw the link to the concepts that Garav is working on. I will, I'll, we'll post it again in the chat just so that everybody can digest it a little bit. It's really, really interesting. It's actually, it's actually somewhat slightly futuristic and um, extremely interesting. As a matter of fact, like if it, if this type of functionality grows in popularity, then people will be writing applications differently. So, cool. Nice, nice work, bro. Thank you. Mm. Mm, nice, Nero. Uh, next up, we have Piyush uh, to demo on filter filters perf list. So, Piyush, do you want to share your screen? Uh, Piyush. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay. So last time I display like demoed the same command, and I'm doing it again. Uh, just for some context, this command is to list out either the performance profiles uh, for uh, performance results, or we can list out uh, all the results concerning a performance uh, profile. Like yeah, like right now I'm going to list all the performance profiles stored in the data. So here, are, like this is, whole thing is paginated, like page one out of two total results are 11. And right now we are displaying 10 results. If I uh, I'll press space bar, we will advance. So if I press control C, we'll stop here. This is the last page. And if I press space bar or control C, either of them, that will close this screen. And we'll be back on the original screen we had in our terminal. 
and uh, if i am passing a, a profile id that i must have copied during this command that will list out all the results of this uh, performance profile so these are the four results and if i'll press space bar or control c this will close yeah, that's what is the recent change in this command and yeah that's some sort of Uh, uh, do we have uh, a JSON output uh, for this? Yeah, we have both YAML and JSON output supported for both both the commands, uh, results and uh, performance profiles. Uh, should I display it? Yeah. Okay, let me sh share that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and for this, let's say output is YAML. So that's how this will get output. And if I pass JSON, this will be like this. Similarly, it will work for a performance, uh, performance results. YAML. All the results are like in this time we are actually uh, showing them off almost 25 results that's the limit and we are printing all of them and similarly with json hey i have a question over here if i remember okay. uh, query according to which is in our backend server right so this particular json or yaml file uh like do, do, do we have the, it only shows us the first, uh, only for the first page itself, or do we have the option to query like a uh, page two, page two? Uh, we don't have the, uh, to query the page two. We are just uh, like printing the maximum limit that is 25 right now. Like uh, one more thing, I should we develop one more endpoint specially for or update the one which we already have for Meshi CTL if that helps because I know this particular thing which was which was based on pages was made by taking in mind the UI component of it. Right? Uh, can you uh, can you say it again? I couldn't understand what you're trying to say. Like the query based on number of pages and uh, like the number of mm -hmm. things one pages was. Developed by keeping your UI in the the browser UI in mind. So like mm. maybe some changes might help. I don't know to query all of them, or is it not at all? So thank you. Like uh, if in this format thing, na? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we can add a separate one more, uh, like page thing because I'm using one page variable that might help us here. Or maybe like a page. Something like if uh -huh. page variable as or minus. Or else I can do the same what I was doing with uh, the original without format command, like printing this JSON thing in that screen and making it paginated. How does that sound? Yeah, that that is all good. In, but what my problem was when you did the JSON thing, right? I mm -hmm. uh, it was not getting all of the results, or it is getting all of the results. Like this particular JSON output which you have, it is only for one particular page, right? and. I don't think you yeah. have a page while you gave the page. Uh, yeah, Drew, like uh, if the user has a lot of uh, profiles, then that will be because we need to get all those details from the server. So that is one issue we go for a non-paginated approach. Uh, like in my opinion, paginated is good just having one more query in which you can get all of them for 
this particular kind of use case might be the solution. Or like Priyanshu uh, said one more. Thing. Like, something to look into like uh Piyush, like you you showed a page flag uh, like yeah i can add a page flag if we want that's uh, like it will be easy to do that if we want to print the next page like the first page will be this if we add page two that will print the second page that's how things can go on Okay, I think we need to look into this further. Like, no. the yeah, Lee has some opinion. No, no, I just, I just wanted to just want to be really clear and pull my microphone really close. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that looking Drew right in the eyes, just okay, Drew, can you? Yes. No, all right, okay. <laughs> this is uh, well, so Piyush has this hard challenge of uh, like uh, of designing a new user experience, um, new in that um, new in that it, it's not that we haven't. Th this challenge has been behind the scenes for a little while, and he's trying to make it right. He's trying to bring forth an experience in which he had he's gating a lot of data and like trying to parse through a human trying to parse through that data on a CLI is um, you know, it's not really what I don't know you know it's, it's more difficult than the CLI um, let me toss out a few examples of um, prior art in the space um, so I'll call upon um, the docker CLI and just you sh I'm curious um, if you mute for a second. Okay, sure. Oh, just one second. Okay, uh, thanks. Feel free to unmute anytime that you want to say something. It was, there's just um, some white noise going on in the background. And so, um, all right, well, well, so, so part of the guiding principles of design for Mastery CTL is well, it focuses around user experience. What is Meshery CTL? It's a user experience. It's a client. It's a client just like Meshery UI is. Dhruv has heard me say this more times than he cares to. Um, and um, as such, everyone's opinion on this call is valid. Everyone is a user. Everyone is going to interface with the UI. Everyone's going to touch the CTL. Every, everyone with their user hat on either enjoys it or doesn't enjoy the interaction. And well, what makes a good interaction? Well, like part of it is, and this is kind of sad to say, but part of it is just familiarity. The reason that it's sad to say is like, okay, well, how do we advance with new, better style interactions, new, better functionality if all we're gonna do is the same old thing over and over? And it's like, well, yeah, therein lie um, the fact that you have to take a user on a journey, you have to let them um, evolve. Like, hey, why are we still using these stupid mice? Like, why are, why are we not just using, training our eyes on the screen? Why is it not looking at my pupils and figuring out what I'm looking at? Like, you know, like eventually we'll have different inputs and all these things, but right now we still have CLIs, right? From the 1950s or whatever. Um, all right, fine. What do the 1950s have to do with today? Well, a lot, as it turns out, unfortunately. Now, some of our very relevant CLIs um, in the space that others have used, that you all have probably used, if you're not using a couple of these CLIs, then I recommend that you do, particularly if you're going to hang around um, this community. It'll just benefit you in general. Um, here's three top of mind. One is Cube CTL. And by the way, it's Notably, not Cube Cuddle. It's Cube CTL. We don't we don't hug our infrastructure around here. We we control it. So just for the record, um, obviously Meshery CTL, but Cube CTL, Docker as a CLI. What is Docker? Why did Docker become so popular? Well, you could say a couple of different reasons concisely, um, but one of them is just UX. They brought a UX to um, containers. They made them portable as well. Like. 
So notably, what is Docker CLI? It's another client. It's another UX. It's so looking at and understanding the Docker CLI, great place to soak it in. Um, all of you are going to use kubectl and all of your classmates, whether they like it or not, they just don't know it yet. Um, at some point, they'll, they'll touch it. Um, okay, good. We should be looking at those. The other one that if you're not, excuse me, if you're not using right now, you should be. <laughs> I mean, you should be in so much as you're listening to me, but you, you should be using GH. GH is um, the CLI from GitHub. It helps you interact with GitHub. It's a client for interacting with GitHub's REST APIs. It really helps for doing, particularly for doing like a pull request review. So you'll, if you aren't there yet, I know a number of you are, but if you aren't there, then go try it out. So why am I going pontificating upon this other stuff instead of letting Soham dem demonstrate some really interesting things is because the user experience is super critical. It's in part, it's why people will use Meshery in the first place. What do you mean by that? Well, like people can go deploy Istio if they want to. Go ahead. It's got a user experience. It's got a CLI. So why would they use Meshery, you know, Meshery's? Well, we're going to bring some stuff on top, some stuff that you can't get anywhere else. And we are doing that. But we're also going to do it at the same time is hopefully have people fall in love with what you're doing. And the way that they do that is by having it be delightful, feel good. Um, they're going to tell other people about it. Oh, this is nice. It was so easy. Like, okay. Well, was it easy to pagnate through pages, walls of JSON in my CLI? No, it wasn't. Did I enjoy that? No, I didn't. As much as I enjoy getting my, you know, my vaccine shot. Um, well, what would I like better? Well, maybe an interactive set of prompts to be able to paginate through things. Yeah, maybe. But even then, I probably don't want to be looking at JSON. Like, I don't really like. I, 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 um, I feel at my nerdiest just sitting here looking at um, um, what's being shared on the screen, right? Uh, all right. So, long story short. Um, the reason that we don't, so, so this all, that all is still is more of like a yes to what Drew was saying. The reason there's probably a no is that, um, is that Drew is headed toward the right place and, and he's highlighting um, some pain that he's just watching in, in seeing what's going on here. So there's a few different, and, and by the way, a lot of this is already written down in the issue. A lot of it's written down in the acceptance criteria of the issue. And a lot of this has already been described um, specific to answer some of these questions. So we should be showing the user when they list out, there's, there's two constructs that they're working with here. One is a profile which is a configure, it's like, what's the configuration of how you want to run a performance test? How intensely and how long and against what do you want to run it? That's a finite set of configurations. And you can see it in Meshery's UI. There's a form in there. It says, what's the duration? What's the endpoint? It's like, there's like eight questions. It's not very long. Those same eight questions are captured into JSON. Users here need to be able to um, look over their profile, the performance profiles that, that they want to run these tests against. They also need to look at any historical test results, results of tests that they've run in context of those profiles. Someone only executes a test in context of a profile. So if you think about the hierarchy of these constructs, there's a profile and, and subsequent to that, there are tests. Um, hence, that's why Piyush has the CLI designed in, in this way. So if he's doing Meshery CTL perf list right now, well, what's he, what's he talking about? The profiles or the test results? Well, um, this may need some revisiting because to me, it looks like he's talking about profiles because he didn't specify um, a particular result. What it looks like he, to me he's specifying is a specific profile ID, which needs to go away. We need to be first supporting people with display, with names that are human readable names. They give meaningful um, names to their profiles, like a soak test. They do not name it 86A94F94-3279- like that just doesn't work. That's not gonna, we're gonna have to change that. One of the ways that you make it work is to, to Drew's answer, something like a search. So the reason I called out GH, Docker, and kubectl, these are good examples of different CLIs that have done. Um, they have lots of data as well. They have lots and lots of containers. You're probably managing lots and lots of containers with Docker, lots and lots of containers and nodes with kubectl. They have the same issue, right? Now, how are they dealing with it? How many open issues do we have in Meshery? Well, we just had our 3,000th issue this week. So Aditya Krishna, who's on the call, had our 3,000th, three thousandth PR. That's really hard to say. 
Um, that's a, and if you want to use GH to iterate through those and look at them, we're talking about pages and pages and pages of PRs to look through. Well, how do you navigate that with GH? Well, you don't navigate through page. You don't go, you don't say, yeah, I think it's on page 2,807. That's probably the page that um, I'm going to find the interesting issue on. <laughs> no, you're going to search. You're going to use some metadata or some interesting thing like, well, I'm looking for a name. I know it probably like started, I had something to do with um, bash because I'm having an issue with bash. So I'm going to search for bash. Let me do a um, measure CTL perf search soak test and whatever matches soak test. Great. Now I'll see a set of those results. And then I want to dig into that particular one. We're probably not ready to, I mean, we're ready to take the CLI to a search. Um, and it's not too difficult. There are other things we probably need to get to. Like that's a good roadmap item. We should probably get to it. Um, for now, providing people the, like not letting people hammer on a remote provider for like thousands of test results and showing them a massive wall of text that their terminal buffer couldn't handle anyway. is like, no, um, yeah, we should be capping it at 25 letting them work through that. They can't read even one of them anyway. If you just output just one of these test results, you couldn't read it. And so, um, yeah, issues. Yeah, not PRs. I mean, yeah, so it's, it's a little bit um, confusing. Like, so there have been 3,000 issues and PRs in total put on Meshery. Um, so, so long story short is... Uh, Piyush is difficult. You've had to explore a couple of different ways of trying to provide an interactive pagination, like that type of an experience in the UI. And ultimately, like one of the, the stronger answers is a search. Yes, we can do interactive um, pagination with like letting the people use their arrow keys to cursor over things and choose what page. And, you know, that's helpful for certain situations. I was giving examples as to why it's generally not as helpful as something like a search. But um, the other reason why, and when Aditi brings this up in a, in a little bit, that we'll talk about interactive prompts in the UI is like they're very pleasant for a human, and the CLI is meant for a human. Unfortunately, um, must, much of us in the industry, all of you as well, ignore the fact that CLIs are made for humans and we script over them as if they're an API. So, interactive. Um, uh, CLI experiences need to be designed with that caveat in mind that there needs to be an alternative programmatic approach. So anyway, Drew's got me uh, all riled up like normal. <laughs> so Chiku <laughs> Piyush, like I think of anything that I, that from my, my feedback and, and, and Drew's is equally as um, meaningful is uh I think you're there, or I think like, like of the 70 something comments you have on that PR, it's probably time that we merge that thing. I think that you're there. I think that there is something to consider around um, the ability to page through things. Um, and it doesn't have to be searched like I was suggesting. It can, there are other um, solutions for that. Um, uh, the documentation, the how how in your design spec, Piyush, you've accounted for the experiences that I was mentioning from Docker and GH and things. That's really good. We don't have to copy exactly from there, but this leads us back to what I was saying initially about a CLI being an experience and what and what makes a quality experience. And I was talking about consistency, but it's it, consistency. But I was also talking about familiarity. So if you do something that people are also already familiar with, it's helpful because they, you can change it, tweak it, you can improve it, but it's helpful because they sort of have a starting point. And so, so the summary is like, I think you're there. Um, we probably aren't. The reason that we would ever be really interested in the use case where someone is outputting more than one test result at a, at a time, that's for a program. Like if they wanna get 20 of those results, they're probably scripting over it or they're persisting it to a file where they can then open it into a human readable spreadsheet and then parse through it there or, or a spreadsheet or whatever else. So. Awesome, so 
yeah stuff to look into uh, let's uh, move on to the next item uh, we have drew presenting their their work on the graphql endpoints drew do you want to take it on yeah sure thanks so much so for the people who don't know meshri is going to a lot of the factoring is in its rest api endpoints and we are also working on creating new graphql endpoints currently there are very less graphql graphql endpoints which you can see in green over here which are currently being deployed but we are planning on creating many more so the people uh, can use them if they want to right and as a part of them uh, currently we have uh, given priority to some of them which we want to start with and we are going to start with them pretty soon uh, any of uh, all of you are invited to look at this graph and give your opinions on how we are documenting or naming all for endpoints and whether they should be there or not and actually this refactoring is a two part thing the first part is uh, refactoring the ui changing their nomenclature properly and stuff like that and second is documenting this particular endpoints correctly so to the graphql point uh, we have arrived somewhere where we are automatically generating the graphql docs using the schema itself schema and the comments in the schema all together uh the framework is all based on ruby uh through which our graphql log works so to give you a gist of how it works uh this is the current schema which you have now it takes the comments which you have for your subscriptions and use that particular thing to make docs and uh it uses a template which i have created over here uh it is a html file uh, for the people who have worked with i guess in django if they have certain templates in which you can fill in stuff if if you want correctly so basically there are some functions which i have defined in ruby uh, which i can run it from over here and it will automatically fill those kind of spaces so you can think of this as a custom meshries uh, compiler for graphql logs uh so it is pretty simple from the user's point of view there is a, a simple rake command which you can run uh, which you have to run inside docs yeah and this particular rake command will uh, get the input from the schema.graphql inside your backend server itself and create a md5 uh create a md file md file is basically a static file which uh, j which our doc file uses to create a particular page in this case it was a graphql reference or md so it used that particular template to create this uh, md file which is basically a static page showing all the documentation for the graphql schema and it is currently up and live in our docs itself so if i go to docs.meshi.io and as you can see graphql reference yeah so this is our automatically generated documentation for graphql now if any of you guys are even slightly familiar familiar with graphql and have read documentation about it it would be greatly appreciated if you can go through it and give us a first review or something like that because uh, i believe i would have made certain mistakes while writing the comments in the graphql docs <laughs> and so on so forth so if you can look through it and give us some first review that will be very great we can update the comments on that particular thing and even if you don't like the format then also you can ping me up we can see if we can do anything about it and if you are very good at graphql you can help us uh, in this particular gigantic amount of refactoring and adding new graphql endpoints in meshri if you are interested in that you can ping me to uh currently gorov as is going to help us as shown as and to help uh, gotham yes gotham has i'm very bad with names sorry yeah gotham has helped us uh, 
has shown interest to yeah he is going to help us with few of this graph scrolling fun but any anyway, if anyone else of you is interested then please ping me yeah so that's all from my side any questions uh any comments to podru uh so like as uh, dru mentioned like if you are interested in graphql or have worked with graphql before it, it, this might be a good place to jump in uh uh any other queries um not a query but i think your laptop's about to be shut down and uh, yeah so like <laughs> <laughs> thank you dru uh since we are running out of time let's move on to soham uh, for a demo on west map designer soham all yours yeah just a second i'm audible hello are you guys are audible is your audible yeah yeah cool let me share my screen this yeah so is is the web browser visible can anybody confirm no yeah, um, i think we're still seeing no truth we are still yeah okay how about there it is no oh, okay so uh, hey guys uh, so this is uh, mesh map designer it's one of the features that is literally unique to us and uh, there are two components to mesh map designer uh, there is a designer view which you are currently looking at and there is a visualize so, uh, oh, uh, yeah. so I'm, i'm so sorry for interrupting i am um, i'm only doing that because yeah. um it just in in order of sequence of like of this functionality utkarsh or is exactly. utkarsh able to okay yeah. i was also going to ask for that but yeah you can just ask him uh utkarsh do you want to you want to hit it first and then um a lot of what soham is going to show will make even more sense yeah sure sure okay Uh, so then um, share a pattern file quickly. I hope pattern is visible. So um, uh, to, just to give a brief context on what the work is, uh, <clears throat> I've been recently working on um, uh, adding a new type of uh, functionality to patterns. That is, now you should be able to deploy applications using just meshry. Uh, so uh, what here uh, this particular pattern file is doing is uh, I'm trying to deploy up uh, an application. which is essentially a docker container <clears throat> and i'm trying to deploy it using just meshry no other tools uh, so basically that's a that's a short con uh, context other things that would be soon added to this thing which are not yet present uh, although they are kind of present in code i won't be demoing that because i'm not sure uh, about it yet so what you would be able to do is you'd be able to specify the deployment strategy that is you can specify if you want to go ahead and do canary or blue green that's two things that i'm trying to cover for now uh let me show how just simple deployment would work um using using machine so i'm trying to apply a new pattern uh, this uh, new rollout demo dot yaml uh, this is the file uh, i'm saying that i want this application to be deployed uh, which whose name is going to be svc Uh, and uh, I'm also trying to provision Istio Mesh. Not that it's required. I'm just trying to show that depends on kind of works. Uh, so now I have hit the I have hit enter. This particular process takes a bit of time because it's, it tries to provision Istio Mesh and uh, tries to provision SVC. This could have been uh, executed concurrently, but they would be executed sequentially because I've explicitly stated a dependency in here. uh let's see the mesh uh oh, <clears throat> so i think 
this has already come up. And it has also created a, a successfully deployed application SVC. And it's deployed in test namespace. I hope it would have created a service also. So yeah, uh, basically it has completed the task that we assigned it, uh, and that was uh, to deploy an application and also let you access it uh, using a load balancer. Load balancer is kind of the default right now. Although I do plan to add uh, settings in there. So here is a settings field. You should be able to specify ingress in here and that is, uh, and uh, machine would automatically detect that uh, what uh, ingress controller you are using. If it's if you're using the default is the ingress uh, gateway or you're using Nginx ingress, that's the two I have in my head. Uh, I'm not sure if AWS or something ingress I'd be adding support for, for right now, but this is the first iteration and first iteration is going to cover <clears throat> these kind of features. And this is still work in progress and that's a disclaimer. That's, that's nice. Like, uh, queries, thoughts, suggestions on this? Of course, we can also uh, upload our pattern files on Meshki UI, right? Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, one thing is uh, the ingress you talked about, which it could able to do it. Uh, so that is mostly uh, like, you know, into, let's say I'm using STO. So it will create the ingress for STO using STO. Yeah. Uh, I mean, was that? Yeah, if the question was that if you are using STO ingress gateway, which would, I think, uh, I mean, uh, it does come with a de um, default profile. So if you, if uh, if, uh, if uh, Meshri would figure out that you have a stainless gateway present in your cluster, it will uh, it will it will actually configure this uh, in this gateway so that you can access your application uh, leveraging the ingress gateway that you have. Uh, right now, it assigned the load balancer because uh, because this particular thing hasn't been. It's it's not complete yet, but yeah, ideally that's what and that's what is going to happen. That it's going to configure your ingress gateway for you so that you can access your application using that. Uh, you would be able to configure that thing. Uh, not not to its full full extent. You would be able to configure things like uh, uh, get it uh, make it accessible on this particular host. Uh, these kind of things. Uh, but, uh, exposing the entire uh, configuration for an ingress controller would be a bit difficult because all of the ingress controller. Uh, kind of uh, expose different kind of functionality. Uh, so uh, I, the goal would be to expose as many functionality as we can while keeping same defaults. Okay, so that is what I was asking. Let's say I am on Azure, I'm using a case. I have, apart from service message, Azure comes with out of the box solution for let's say front door or let's say application gateway ingress and all, all other things. So how should my message will understand which ingress I want to expose? Okay, yeah, uh, actually if, if it detects more than, uh, actually even for this, actually it's going to, uh, right now it's going to make you uh, make choices for you for service mesh. So for example, it detects more than one service mesh. Uh, it's going to actually use uh, Istio in that case. Uh, uh, and same is going to be for ingress uh, that it's going to make a choice for you. What the default is, that's not I have put, uh, like that's not I have hard coded it yet. Um, but uh, the thing is that just like now, uh, you have a choice to specify that go ahead and use uh, Istio mesh. You can, uh, this, is a per, uh, this is a very valid feed, you can ask, Meshri to specifically go ahead and configure Istio or use Istio to do this deployment. You would also have the have the ability to uh, basically force Meshri to use a particular ingress controller that you want to. If that's if that was a question, I hope I got it. But... Mm, not really. Okay. So uh, what I was thinking is, I want to use Istio, but not as ingress controller. So in that case, how do like you know my uh, pattern would understand. Okay, no problem. 
I... Yeah, actually, the thing is that uh, this mesh thing, this is, I, I was trying to emphasize that this mesh thing is, uh, this would be used, so for example, this would be used to create virtual services for you. But uh, what if you don't have Istio, it would use Linkerd. This is not exactly related to English controller configuration. For, in, for configuring English controller, you would have some other feed, like it won't be here, uh, it would be in traits. But uh, you would have some other feed, like you want to use, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Nginx English controller. So you would have, you would be able to uh, tell Mishri that do not make choice for me or do not uh, do anything on your own. I'm telling you, go ahead and co configure Nginx, uh, Nginx English controller. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Samir. Um... Maybe yeah, you know we only have um, six minutes left. So, Samir, if I'm gonna, I'll follow up and we'll just make sure that 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 I suspect that only partially answers your question. So, we'll, we'll chat you up more to make sure it does, and okay. and, and, and to make to make sure it's what you need as well. Because so, okay. yeah, thank you. Oh, awesome! Like. Uh, let's let's move on to the next agenda, I guess, mm -hmm. since we are running out of time. Uh, so, um, do you want to continue your demo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be just sharing my screen again. Uh, is, it, is it visible? Can someone confirm? Yeah, it's visible. So, yeah, I was talking about uh, us having two components currently. One of them is the visualizer view, where you can actually visualize your uh, deployed service meshes. And the one that I would be explaining today is uh, the design of you. So uh, like on the left side, we have a, what we call a designer pane. And uh, in the center uh, is what we call the canvas. Now uh, let's uh, fall back to what uh, Utkosh was explaining. Uh, Utkosh was, was talking about pattern files. And uh, you can also upload uh, your pattern files uh, on the mesh view UI. So suppose you have uploaded a pattern file over here. The pattern file that you just uploaded over here, you can, you can just see that the pattern files are also fetched over here. And uh, as soon as I uh, click on any pattern file, the designer view uh, does a lot of things. Uh, like it reads the pattern file, it converts it into a Cytoscape JSON. It uh, reads all the elements inside the pattern file, like. Uh, the pods, the services, whatever you have written in the part file. And it actually visualizes them inside the canvas. Now, uh, so you can visually see what the button file exactly looks like. But that's not why we call it the designer, actually. Yeah. So uh, as soon as uh, you load a pattern file, uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it. So on the left side, uh, the first tab is where uh, there are a lot of components uh, listed. So now, uh, for example, uh, these are mm, service mesh components. For example, we have service, we have deployment. Now, uh, what we can do with them is, uh, what I can do with them is I can just uh, click and drag and drop these components inside the canvas. Uh, I can make edges from one service to the other service. I can zoom out, I can zoom in, I can fit the service, I, I can fit it inside the view, I can take a screenshot of it, I can maybe, if, if I want to, I can group them, I can move the group around, uh, I can make edges from a group to a service, I can also maybe, uh, if, if I'm not happy with, like, uh, I, I don't, if I don't want this, uh, uh, component to be here, I can just delete it. Or maybe if I did it uh, as a mistake, I can just undo it, redo it, uh, uh, and do a lot of stuff. Like That is why we call it the designer. Now, it does not end there. Now, suppose you have uh, edited your canvas the way you wanted. Suppose you have the desired design that you want. Uh, now, if you look, uh, look right over here, right now what it says is that uh, you have updated your canvas. And it gives you an option to uh, save it. So what it does is uh, once you click save over here and uh, give a name to this design or this pattern or this design that you want to save, what uh, the designer view does is uh, the designer view converts this design into a pattern file and uh, then saves it over the uh, patterns uh, that 
like the ones that you saw earlier. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, since the Meshri cloud uh, has not been updated, I guess, like I talked to Utvarsh yesterday, and uh, since it's not been updated, I won't be able to convert this into a pattern file right now. But yeah, uh, the desired functionality which has been implemented is that I can just save this as a pattern file. That's it for the demo, guys. Looks really good. Yeah, yeah this is something uh, what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, what what is this May? This isn't Christmas time. What uh, is this? This is like a Christmas come early. This is um. Very, very early functionality, um, super compelling from my perspective. And Samir, you're grokking it spot on that um, if it was intended to do the, the exact same things as Kiali, it would be like, well, it would be really difficult to justify writing yet another Kiali or, you know, like, um, but there's a couple of things that are significantly different here. Um, some only some of which are apparent at the moment. It'll become a lot more apparent just how dramatically different this is when you. Th I'll, I won't spoil some of those, um, but we'll say two significantly different capabilities that should be fairly obvious at this point are. This is for every mesh, not Istio, or not just Istio. Um, now it'll go deep on Istio and it'll probably be the first one that we go um, quite deep on, but, but the generic pattern files, the generic, um, uh, all the adapters and things, it's meant to work on any mesh. Second thing that should be becoming obvious is the significant difference with respect to a designer. So, so yeah, um, Soham or Utkarsh, do you guys want to talk about how GitHub, how Git comes into play here? Yeah, yeah, you can, uh, like uh, recently Utkash made a PR uh, from which uh, you can basically uh, fetch pattern files from any remote location. You just need to give the Meshri UI the URL to, like it's, it's not yet implemented in Meshri UI, but it's implemented in Meshri CTL, I suppose. And you can just give the URL of the, uh, where the file is located and also flag if you want to save the file or not. And uh, yeah, it would basically fetch the file and save it as a pattern file. If that's what you're going to like, uh, say, Lee. Most certainly. Um, there's another component of that to, to restate that. It is that not only will, does Meshri allow you to and, um, import from any generic HTTP endpoint, but Meshri also will um, interface with GitHub's API. So it'll OAuth, if you OAuth to Meshri through uh, with your GitHub account, um, eventually you'll be able to give Meshri permission to um, browse through your repo, um, find anywhere where you have Kubernetes manifests or these service mesh pattern files. Um, it'll import those, you can then pull them up like Soham was just showing here in the visual designer, um, work on them, iterate on them. When you're done making some changes, um, perhaps you don't want to apply those right away. Perhaps the most appropriate thing is to submit a PR on those. So Meshri will, or MeshMap will facilitate that as well. Ultimately, when you go to click save, it'll also say, did you want to generate a PR? You know, if this one is based, if, um, that pattern file was sourced from GitHub. Do, do you want to generate, either do a push or commit or generate a PR based on that? So that Meshri then hooks into your GitOps flow. So. And all these graphics, uh, are these generic for any of the service or maybe, because this is the same kind of graphics which Kiali uses? Yeah, yeah this is, uh, we are, I would almost would, I would almost not comment on what this will be like. Um, this is extremely early. Like um, there are thoughts given to a letting the user upload their own um, graphics for to represent whatever that service is. Um, B, yeah, ideally not using. Um, 
I, you know, I don't know. Actually, Samir, your input there might be very helpful because we're on the. the yeah, the because F there may be some copyright issue or something. Because... Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, no. There's absolutely like I, I've had teams build this at SolarWinds, at Cisco, at like this is a tried and true path of like there's, there's none of that going on for sure. Um, th there's no way in hell anyone could ever copyright a triangle anyway. But um, but even at that, like, no, um, moreover, like, why is a service a triangle? What, what does that to say? It makes sense? No, probably not. Now, we'll probably end up with some polygons with some of those types of shapes just just because you have to show something. But um, but it's, it's food for thought. We might even make that like a user's choice where if they want to use the, a suite of uh, polygons to represent something or their own custom icons or something more like an icon like um yes any yes. svg i suppose yeah but yeah no i was we were i'll show you some screenshots of some of the things that my teams have done before kiali came along um and we, we've got a long-standing relationship with those guys um the, the folks behind Kiali before they started the project. But um, yeah. But you're right, um, Samir, people will most readily compare this to Kiali uh, because Kiali is really the only significant, I mean, yeah, yeah, the only significant open source. Yeah, service but the Dryden features, which, which is there in this, that is much more significance for me because I would like to see or foresee what exactly gonna happen because only Kiali, which shows me what has happened so far. And I really had to navigate a lot to get a particular matrix out of that. So. Yeah, there's another aspect. I mean, like, you know, I, I have nothing but positive remarks to say about, you know, those folks or what have you. Or, but this, so this isn't a disparaging remark, but, but one of the other reasons why we're, you know, creating another one of these is, not only because we want to accomplish some significantly different things, like dry run is one of those. One of those is around like performance testing, which is you want to do dry runs or do exam. Like what happens when you tweak your configuration and um, does your performance go up or down? And, and you might want to like Meshery is built to facilitate those very types of experiences or um, and help you optimize toward that. Um, mm -hmm. to, uh, there's another aspect of which Kiali is was fairly heavily centered around Prometheus and it should be like you need to get tons of metrics from Prometheus about what's going on but um, it is inherently set up to as a polling um, architecture which sometimes you got to do that basing your entire architecture on that mm, it's not what I would do and that's not what we're doing this is event driven um, by and large that um, and that's what mesh sync is about. Like mesh sync is pumping info in, into. So next time that we give a demo of mesh map, maybe a good thing to do is like, this is the designer view. Maybe we should take a look at the visualizer view and watch as um, like the visualizer view is more akin to Kiali where it, you know, it's, it's watching the active deployment. Um, mm -hmm. And so we should see, we should start to see a, a significant difference. And is there any plan to have some kind of persistent volume to be added for this uh, kind of event driven? Yeah, do you mean like, um, I, it's the same, I think there's two ways in which that question could be interpreted. One is that mesh sync itself is, um, you know, designed to be focused on things concerning service meshes, but things that, you know, objects in Kubernetes that concern service meshes, uh, which actually means everything eventually like stateful sets and volumes and other things you might want to visually represent. Like at some point, if you expand on the designer here, it's like, well, my application uses um, jobs and other, you know, is that what you meant? Or did you mean a volume to persist your configurations? Your uh, uh, no, so I, I would like to see like you know, all of my components on this particularly. Gotcha. Yeah, makes it makes sense because those have an effect on because those are part of your app, and so yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Cool. That is, yeah. Really, really good feedback, Samir. We we need more of it. Yeah. 
Drew and Utkarsh, like you're getting people all excited. It's good. Thank you. I guess I'll stop sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess like we are out of time, like always. I guess so. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, this was a this was a good meeting, and we uh, I think everyone ha got a good feedback on their works. And yeah, I guess I'll meet some of you tomorrow on the um, Shri CTL bug hunting session, uh, which is right after the newcomers meeting or we, we will meet Friday on the community call. And uh, if you are a newcomer, we also have a newcomers call uh, tomorrow. So be sure to check out that. Awesome. Bye guys. Thank you all. See you in the event. Thank you. Bye. Bye Samir. Bye everyone.